Hello everyone, I'm Deya and welcome back to the reader side or welcome if you are new here. Today, I am here to talk about this male male monster romance series that I have been loving lately. And this series is Monstrous by Lily Main. For some reason, I have been craving monster romance and I had this series for like months now so I figured I will give this book a try. And don't worry because I will try to make this video as spoiler free as I can. So book 1 Soul Eater was really entertaining and readable. In this series, there are these monsters that appeared from other dimension 20 years ago. So now there are some parts in the world where it is not safe to live there anymore more because it has been destroyed by these monsters and those places are called the waste in the waste the monsters ruled including the infamous wind the soul eater who appears every three years he got that name because he sucks people's soul and leave them there to die he had killed thousands of people already he is very dangerous of course the military wants him dead they planned this surprise attack sacrificing hundreds hundreds of soldiers just to capture win and our other hero Danny is one of the would-be sacrifice Danny knows that he will likely die with their plan but he tag along anyway because he have nowhere to go and he have no one now that his mother died at first he was like at least my life would mean something you know but as they implemented their plan and Danny saw his comrades dying right before his eyes, he realized how meaningless everything is. He got really scared of the death that is about to come that he froze instead of shooting wind. And this made the soul eater notice Danny. That destruction that lasted for like a mere second is exactly what the military needed so they ended up successfully capturing win. When Danny woke up, he found out that he is the only survivor of their team and that his officer wants him to interrogate the Soul Eater since they realized that Win reacted to Danny's presence in the fields. So they assumed that it would be the same this time too. And they are right. Danny is tasked to interrogate the Soul Eater regarding their species and the military wants to know their strength and weaknesses. But instead of answering those questions, Win started asking about Danny instead and that is the start of their romance. Since the monsters and the military are involved, of course there is violence in this book but their romance is very sweet and floppy. Honestly, their romance is low angst but it is not boring to read because of the external conflict that they need to address. I actually really like reading stories like this where you know that the couple is solid and that there is no drama between them. Maybe aside from the upcoming third act conflict. But as I have said, you would not be bored because of the external obstacles that they need to overcome. Overall, a solid 4 stars. After this, of course, I immediately read the second book, Eden, which I also gave a solid 4 star rating. The second book is about Wynn's monster friend, Eden, who is a giant purple monster with a blindingly sunshine personality. I mean, imagine the hero in Hillboy, but instead of a red skin, he have purple. He also wears a kilt, and he is very optimistic. Then we have our other hero, Hunter, who is in the military. Him and his best friend, Charlie, just finished their mission and is now traveling back to their base. But they got attacked by these small monsters and Hunter fell into this giant hole. That's when Eden saw him. He rescued Hunter but the small monsters kidnapped Charlie. Hunter loves Charlie like a brother so of course he went after him and Eden tagged along with him. This is a road trip romance with a sunshine and grumpy trope. It is kinda refreshing to read about a sunshine monster hero because they are usually brooding with alpha tendencies but not Eden. Yes, he is dominant too but he is understanding and respectful with Hunter. Most of all, he doesn't mind it when Hunter lead their search and rescue mission which bodes well with Hunter's personality due to his experiences in the military. 
At first, I am not loving Hunter's personality because he is just too grumpy for me, but I am glad that we got an explanation why he was like that, especially in the beginning. I also really appreciate that Eden didn't mind Hunter's strong personality. I just feel like they really match each other. And the later part of the book was really cool because we get to see more of what is happening with other people. I don't want to spoil anything but the small monsters that kidnapped Charlie, they are actually bringing Charlie in this illegal place and it was really fascinating seeing that side of this world. Plus, I am really glad that we get to see Win and Danny in here too. After this, I have The Rick, which is the third book in this series. In book 2, we found out that there is a camp of some sort where riders live together in the waste, and our hero, Ghost, is part of this camp. Every person living in their camp has a role to fulfill in order to keep their place working, and Ghost's work is to scout. He basically travel and searches for things that their camp needed. When their camp heard that a military base was born down to the ground, they send Ghost along with his friend Rig to scout for any remaining things that might be of use. And that is when Ghost meet Ori, who is a Rick. When Ghost saw Ori, he is wounded and could not even move. So he and Rig help Ori. They brought him to their camp, and it is the start of Ghost and Ori's romance. Of course, at first, the people are wary of Ori because of his appearance, but you cannot help but love Ori. He is very sweet, adorable, gentle, and shy. In book 1 though, we found out that the military is keeping a monster in their basement and this monster is the Rick. We know, based on the Soul Eater's reaction, that this monster is bad news, but we don't know why. At first, I was really wondering why the Soul Eater said that Ricks are dangerous, since I cannot see that in Ori, but then something happened and I was like, okay, now I get it. Ori's kind doesn't like hurting people, the military literally slice him open but he never even attempted to escape even though he can. There is just something in their genes that doesn't like fighting or even confronting people. However, the twist though is that the Ricks are the most powerful monsters that ever existed. They can transform into this giant monster form and when they do, they are invincible. They are so strong that all the monsters steer away from them. And this is because the Rikes almost always wins a fight. And usually, the only person that can kill a Rike is a Rike as well. The hero in book 2, Eden, he is the only one left in his kind because his whole species was killed by a single Rike during one battle. And Eden's race is strong and they fought with every remaining breath in their body but they did not win against one single Reich. Imagine that. But Ori's kind cannot just transform whenever they want. Their transformation needs to be triggered. Even if Ori is dying, he would never harm the person that attempted to harm him. But once a Reich finds a mate, they would devote their protection to that being. And if you so much as make their mate sad, the rake would transform and your whole city is a lost cause because a rake would never stop destroying everything until nothing is left. So when Ori mated with Ghost, who is always in danger because of his scouting, things got pretty intense and I was really entertained. I actually really really like this book and ended up giving this a solid 4 star rating because I really appreciate Ghost's character arc. In the beginning of this book, he doesn't know his worth and even though he hates scouting, he does it because he is scared that it is the only valuable thing he can offer to their group. But being with Ori made him see that he is valuable too and that he is so much more than just his ability to bring things to their camp. Most of all, I really really like Ori's character. He is so innocent but ruthless at the same time and I am digging it.
Next, I read a 180 pages novella, Win, which is the 3.5 in the series. In here, we are following Danny and Win again as they travel to the monster world. So, the premise of this is that in book 1, we know that Win, the soul eater, is like 10,000 years old. And well, Danny is a human with a lifespan of 100 if he is lucky. So the readers are wondering how they would have their happily ever after and this is the answer to that. Win and Danny traveled to the monster world to connect their souls together so they can share their lifespan. If you are a fan of this series, I feel like you would totally love this one however if you are only a casual reader of this genre and you just want to get the rig story then you can skip this one and you would not miss anything aside from knowing that Danny can now have his happily ever after with win because they can live equally long lives and that Eden and Hunter can do the same as well the world in here is really fascinating so I gave this one 3.5 stars next we have Gloom which is Rig's story in book 3 we meet Mary who is this seemingly sweet old lady that enslaves monsters for fun she camped right outside of Rig's camp along with her imprisoned monster named Gloom because she wanted to add Ori to her collection but Ori and Ghost had escaped, all the while Rig is keeping an eye on Gloom. Gloom is a type of monster that celebrates knowledge. They are smart and powerful, but their weaknesses lies in their names. If someone knows their true full name, they can use that to make Gloom's race a puppet. Gloom would be under their command and he would not be able to do anything about it. Mary is obviously controlling him and Rig made it his personal mission to free Gloom. So when Mary found out that Ori had escaped, she had no plans to stay on the waist, so she left. But Rig went with her. He wanted to keep an eye on Gloom and figure out a way to free him, and it is the start of their romance. I actually really like this one because of Rig and Gloom. Their romance is kinda insta lovey, but I didn't mind it because of how awful gloom circumstances are mary put a cage on his head and they sued his mouth with wires so he won't be able to talk i mean it was really awful and rig gave him hope that he could escape the world expanded a bit in here too and we get to see new characters that i feel like would have a book someday it's kind of a spoiler so i am not sure what to tell and what not to tell you but the later half of this book where rig got separated from gloom was really gripping and realistic especially because of the place that he was trapped in if an apocalypse happened in real life too i feel like something like that organization would happen as well it was really eerie to think about but overall i had a good time reading this one so four stars all right guys that's the end of my review for this series Obviously, I am not done yet with this one. I still have more books to read from this series and I am really, really excited to read Matt's story next time. But at the same time, I don't want to read this back to back to back. So I will be taking a break from this one. But I know that I will be back soon because I really had a fun time reading this apocalyptic monster romance. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment whether you have already read this series or not. Or are you planning to pick this one up? See you next time. Bye.